This is a short example of how a Huffman coding works. I'm going to take an English phrase in the Roman alphabet, which is um, this phrase, the essential feature, and I'm going to encode it into a binary string using Huffman coding. So the first thing I have to do is come up with frequency counts for each of the letters. So I'm going to use this um, alphabet to record the frequency. So um, what is the phrase? It's the essential feature. I'm also going to add a character for space because we have to encode space also. So we have uh, T, H, E, space, E, S, S, E, N, T, I, A, L, space, uh, feature F E A T U R E and you're probably saying Hunter couldn't you have done that before you started the video that was the most boring thing I've ever seen in my entire life and maybe you're right but now we have the frequency information so the frequency of the letter A in that phrase is 2 the frequency of E is 5 I don't know why I wrote that little dwarfish 5. Here's a big man size 5. And 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2. OK. Um, so we have, how many symbols do we have here with a non-zero frequency 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So we have 12 symbols in this phrase and that's not really relevant. We, we might want to know that later when we figure out how much space we saved by doing the Huffman encoding. So the, the way the Huffman encoding works is very simple. You just uh, select the two lowest frequency symbols from uh, the uh, the alphabet. So there are lots of ties here. So F and H is a low frequency pair because both of those things have frequency 1. So I'll just arbitrarily start with those. So I'm going to make a little tree node here and its value is going to be 2. And I'm going to make um, F its left node and H its right, uh, sorry, left child and H its right child. And I'm just doing that arbitrarily. They could be opposite children. Um, OK, so that takes care of F and H. And now I've got I and L. So I'm going to do the same thing with I and L. OK, so I and L are done. And now I've got N and R. Okay, so now N and R are done, and I've got U, and I'm out of uh, frequency 1 letters, so the next best thing I can do is pair U with something that's frequency 2. So I'm going to pair U with uh, space, and the sum of those frequencies is 3. So I write 3 there instead of 2. So here's U, and here is uh, space and now U and space have been used up. So the number, I, sorry I didn't explain that before, the number that I'm writing here in the parent node is the sum of the frequencies. All right, <clears throat> um, so everything that's frequency one is completely gone. Now I still need to pick uh, a low frequency pair. Um, so two and S is the best I can do. And those frequencies add to 4. Um, so I've got, I'm sorry, I said 2. I should have said A, huh? And A doesn't need a circle. Um, a and S. OK, so now I'm done with A and S. All right, and what have I got now? Um, OK, so these things are now sort of entities just like the primitive symbols were entities and what I was doing earlier. So I can actually combine these two to make 
something of frequency 4. Okay, so I'm adding those together. Um, now just to try to clarify what I'm doing here, I'm always picking the lowest frequency pair, but I'm worried that I haven't made clear what the objects are that have frequency. And so this is, this is something with frequency, this is something with frequency, this is something with frequency, this is something with frequency. So the roots of the subtrees and the primitive symbols are the things that have frequencies. Okay, and so what is the best I can do now for lowest frequency, uh, low frequency pair? Um, I could pair these two and, oh, that's not going to be good, is it? Mm, two and three, is that the best I can do? Yeah, I guess so. Just shout out if you see something better, because I don't want to mess up. So those things add up to five. Okay. And, all right, so I can't forget about T here. So here's T with frequency three. Um... And we also still have E. E is still in the game, and he has frequency 5. Okay, so what's the uh, lowest frequency pair? I guess it's, I guess it's T and, and this thing. So let's, let's combine T with frequency 3 and that with frequency 4 to make frequency 7. Um, okay, and now T is gone. And... Now I've got this E thing here. I've also got these two things. So what, what pair makes the smallest sum? Um, so I guess it's 4 and 5. And the sum of those frequencies is 9. OK. And now what can I do? I think the best I can do is add 5 to 7 and make 12. So the 5 comes from E, and E doesn't need a circle. And finally, E is done. OK, so all the primitive uh, symbols have been used. And now the only, there's only one pair left, which is um, you know, these two subtrees. So let me move those down a little bit to make some more space. Uh, cut that one's head off. Yeah, like that. And let me just erase these green things. So now I root these two trees together, and their frequencies add to 21, even though that's not really relevant any longer, because we're done building the Huffman tree. Right? Um, and so, great. So now I'm going to put, I'm going to figure out the, the codes for the primitive symbols by viewing this thing as a uh, try. Um, so this uh, try is a, is a tree in which it's kind of like a binary search tree except instead of storing key value pairs you just store values and the key is represented as the location of the value in the tree in the following way. Um, so I'm just going to arbitrarily call left 0 and right 1. It could be the opposite. Um, so left is 0, right is 1. And I'm going to do this at every single fork. So this is 0, 0. This is 0, 1. And this means that the symbol E is going to be encoded as 0, 1 to kind of give you a peek at how it works. So here I've got 1, 0, because this went 1 and then I went left, which is 0. This is 1, 1. Here's 1, 1, 1. Here's 1, 1, 1, 1. Um, this is one one zero. This is one one zero zero. This is one one zero one. And um, this is one zero one. And I need some more space here. So that one is going to be one zero one one. This one is going to be one zero one zero. This one is going to be one zero zero. This one is going to be one zero zero one. Uh, that one's going to be one zero. Oh, I made a mistake. How come you didn't say anything? Thought that was your job. This one is one zero zero zero. This one is one zero zero one. And I want to be able to read that better. 
So I'm going to just write it again. One and then three zeros. OK, and let's continue with the most boring thing you've ever seen before. Zero, zero, one, zero, zero, zero. Uh, and now we've got zero, 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 one, zero, 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 zero. OK. And now we have, oh, and there's this thing too. So that one is one, 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 zero. All right. So we've assigned codes now to all of the symbols that occurred in the original phrase. So for instance, A now is going to be encoded as zero, zero, zero. S is going to be encoded like this. Here's the code of T. And what you'll notice is through Huffman magic, the symbols with high frequencies now have short codes. So that's one thing to notice. So E is by far the most frequent symbol that occurred in the phrase. And it has by far the shortest code, which is length 2. Um, and so similarly, T has pretty high frequency, and T has a pretty short code. So that's what Huffman trees do, is they assign short codes to frequent symbols. Um, OK, and another thing to note is that this code is uh, prefix free. So what that means is that no code is an initial part of another code. So if I were just going to encode some phrase using this code that we've just come up with, I might want to say E and then I. So I just did the code for E followed by the, the code for from I. And notice that this is totally unambiguous. So you might think, what if I could parse this some other way and view like this is a code and view that as a code, smart guy. and so that's not really a danger, and that's because this is a prefix-free code. And um, so that means if you just if you look at this first part, 0, 1, you see that that is E's code, but it's not a prefix of any of the other code words. And so um, that makes it, that makes the the encoded version of the phrase unambiguous. And so we can decode it into just one thing. Um, so now let's go ahead and encode the phrase using our code. Um, so the phrase is the essential feature. All right. Um, so I am a pretty dumb person, and so I'm going to write that again down here just to help myself. The essential feature. OK. And now don't let me forget to encode the blanks. So here are the blanks. And yeah, OK. So now let's get started. So we need the code for, this is going to, by the way, if you thought what happened before was boring, you know, look out. Also, I think I can just use the number pad here instead of writing. So the, um, the code for t is 001. Then we have an H, and H is 1001. And then we have an E. You can fast forward this video if you want. Um, 1, 2, 3, 4 for the blank, and then another E. And then two S's. So where is S? It's right there. 1, 2, 3, 1, 1, 2, 3, 1. And then another E. And then a T. And then an I and then an A, and um, then a T. Oh wait, did I totally lose track? Yeah, it should be an L, right? Oh my gosh. Help me figure out where I was. So these four things are an A, and um, I think I was right here, right? So this should be the code for L, and so that should be um, one zero one one. Okay, and now we do the space, and now we do F, and now we do E, and A, and then T, and then U, and then R, and then E. And that's it. Okay, so let's see how long this thing is. 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66. Okay, so we encoded this thing in a uh, length 66 um, binary number. Let's compare that to how long it would take to encode this thing in binary if we just did it in some naive way. So I think the most naive way to do it, well, you know, we recorded up here that there are 12 symbols. That's why I wanted to know that. Um, so this is the Huffman length. And so what are some other ways we could have encoded this thing? We could have done 12 symbols times, um, by the way, is that the length of the phrase or the number of distinct symbols? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Okay, so the, the phrase is actually 21 long. So if we just did ASCII, then it would be 21 times 8 to encode this thing. So that is 168, which is much longer. Okay. Um, another thing we could do is just use how many, how many, what length do binary numbers need to be to represent all the alphabetical characters? So there are 26 alphabetical characters plus space is 27. You can represent all of those with five bits, right? So another way we could have encoded this phrase naively is 21 times five, which is 105, which is a little bit better, but notice that Huffman is still really whipping it. And maybe the smartest, dumbest thing that we could have done is to um, just come up with a binary number and associate it with each of these 12 symbols. So that would take four bits because you need four bits to represent 12 things. And so that would be 21 times 4, which is 40, oh, sorry, 84. Okay, and that's getting close. Um, but you can still the, see that the Huffman coding is, is much shorter, so it beats all those, all right? And there's one more thing I want to look at, which is uh, the decoding process. So how do you decode this monster? Diode, decode. Um, so that is actually really um, cute, the way it works with the tree. Um, so let me make some space, and I'm going to start decoding. So you use the tree to decode just like you use the key to, or sorry, the tree to, or the try or whatever, to encode. Um, and so it goes like this. So it starts zero, zero, 001. So I'm just going to follow that here on my tree. And so I'm going zero, uh, zero one so the and then I come to a leaf so I write T and now I start again at the root and and pick up where I left off one zero zero so one zero zero and so I must not be done yet and so what does it say it says one zero zero one one zero zero one must be H okay so one zero zero one was H and now I do uh, 0, 1, 1. So 0, um, 1. OK, so actually it must just be 0, 1 is E. OK. So now I'm up to here. And now I have um, some 1s. So I go 1, 1, 1, 1. And then I get to the space. And now I'm up to here. And I think you see how it works, right? Um, let me, since the end of the video, I can actually have mercy on you and stop at this point. So I think it's clear how it works. And um, that's how Huffman coding works. And that's the end of the video.